Hey everybody, <clears throat> how you doing? Here we are again. Did y'all survive that snow? Man, what a deal. Uh, had somebody up north uh, call me today and uh, he was, you know, I'm still selling those drum pumps. Uh, you know, they're, they're going like crazy all the time, but uh, main thing is the guy, you know, the snow slowed down the delivery system across the country, especially down here in Texas. And he was, you know, he was, it's been like two weeks. He was wondering where his pump was. And so I had to look it up on my phone and send him the uh, UPS, uh, you know, number, uh, tracking number and all that stuff. And I told him, I said, you know, everything has been kind of slow around here because we had that snowstorm. <clears throat> he said, where are you? And I said, I'm down here in San Antonio. He said, no kidding. Y'all had snow down in San Antonio? I said, yeah, you know, about every 10 years we have snow. And I said, but the problem was this time, uh, you know, got down some areas like Kerrville, you know, it got down 10, 11 degrees in the middle of the night. And I said, our electricity was off here at my house. It was off. I, I think I mentioned that to you. <clears throat> and uh, got my water line all back up and uh, went ahead and went with uh, PVC again because you know, I, I built this back here in the backyard, <clears throat> this shop in 2004. <laughs> so it, it made it that long. If it, if it goes that long again, I probably won't be out here doing anything, uh, except maybe sitting here feeding the squirrels or something. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's time for an update. You know, spring is right around the corner. Some of y'all are uh, getting back out there. <clears throat> All of you that are building something, you know, everybody's chipping away, having a good time. So, I'll tell you what I'm doing. It isn't a whole lot more, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm moving farther along. So let me turn the phone around and we'll see what we got. Okay, uh, let's talk this manifold again. Of course, this manifold right here, uh, got it sitting on this setup block. Uh, that's for a splayed valve motor. And uh, famous Taylor Laster TRE racing engine. <clears throat> and I bought this probably about eight years ago maybe and of course there's always a story you know in my life uh, you know I was some of y'all know I was working at the fuel station at San Antonio Raceway when Gordon sponsored in the Alamo hot rod parts out there and it was a Wednesday night you know the track used to be open for test and tune on Wednesdays and I was sitting out there and it was just about over. There wasn't very many people out there. It was kind of one of those nights that was, you know, kind of humid and there's a little bit of, you look up at the, the you know, the lights out there and kind of see this little mist and fog looking stuff in the air. And all of a sudden there was this big rig that came pulling into the, came pulling into the, uh, to the track, you know, from where I was sitting down at the fuel station. You know, I thought, well, that's kind of odd. Somebody's coming out, to do a little testing. Well, it was Taylor Laster. And, you know, he pulled up there close to the line. They took a little while to unload everything. And what rolled out of the trailer was a, it was a Corvette. You know, it, I don't know all the different gen numbers of all that stuff. But, it you know, it wasn't like super new. Uh, it was popular. It had those big lights in the back, those two big round lights, whatever that was, gen 6, 5, something like that. And, you know, of course, it, I couldn't see it real close. I was sitting down at the fuel station, but, you know, they fired it up, warmed it up, and went over into the tech line. Somebody went walking over there and tech the car in. He came back, you know, put on his garb and, you know, headed up to the staging lanes. And I could hear it way down there. And then all of a sudden, this guy pulls into the, you know, like from my view I could see across the front of the grandstands and I saw him pull up into the staging lanes uh, I'm, I'm sorry the uh, into the uh, on, on the track you know pulling up to the line he did his burnout and of course this thing was screaming and you know it was a it was a five-speed car and I found this all out a little later on as I walked down there just see what it was all about but you know of course he pulled up to the line Light turned green, sat there for just a second, brought that thing up to who knows what, and, you know, all five gears slamming right straight down the line. That thing went like 695 right out of the trailer. He comes back by me down the return road and pulls over to his pit. And, you know, there wasn't many people. I wasn't doing anything. So I go walking down there, and bigger than life, this thing, this Corvette had a 
splayed valve motor. Um, and it was two 1050s, you know, just like that, or 1150s, maybe, you know, bigger, who knows. But, I, I, you know, and I didn't say much to them. They were busy. They were actually loaded it up. They made that one pass in 695 or something, and they just loaded it right up and, you know, got all their stuff together, turned on their lights, and headed out the door. Just like that. And, I mean, that's Cleveland, Texas, up there around, uh, you know, the Houston area. And so that was so impressive that when I saw this manifold for sale, um, you know, of course, I had to have a splayed valve motor. So I bought this thing, and it's just been sitting around. It's it's an inspiration uh, deal. Uh, if I had a curio cabinet that was big enough to put this stuff in, uh, that'd be sitting in it. But lo and behold, here we are from 2012 to 2021. Um, I now have <laughs> all the stuff for a splayed valve motor. And so this manifold is going to stay in the family for a little bit longer. Anyway, cool story, you know, right off the trailer, 695. He's probably selling the motor to somebody and needed a place to show him that, you know, it's going to do what it said it was going to do. And he did what he said he was going to do. So that's always been impressive. Uh, you know, of course, that dude's badass anyway. Okay, so what else we got going? Uh, you know, still got the setup blocked and this just sitting in here. I was just standing here looking at this. Thought I'd tell you what's going on out here. Okay, well, last time I saw you, I couldn't put my I put half the motor together and um, I couldn't I couldn't uh, finish it because the rods were all hitting each other. But anyway, I got all that finished and I was able to put the short block together and got this guy all all ready to go. Everything's torqued down there. I just I had to get some, uh, this is a brand new block. It didn't come with uh, uh, the little studs for the oil pump. Uh, so I had to pick up some little uh, dowels. I mean, the dowels for the oil pump. So I got those and they're in a bag over there. And so this thing, will, uh, this will have heads on it here pretty soon. Uh, doing some more shopping. Got online, you know, uh, found a good deal. I, uh, this, this, uh, this SB2. Um, SB2 motor, uh, not the splayed valve, and this is a 325 cubic inch. It's 4.155 on the bore, and 3. Point, uh, 3 well, it's a 3 inch, 3, 3 inch stroke, 4.155, a 325 cubic inch or something like that. Well, anyway, I had already purchased for this, I built that sheet metal manifold for this around here somewhere, um, to, to run a quadrajet. You know, I've always been impressed with quadrajet. You know, when they run big numbers, you know, for little bitty motors, it's kind of impressive. So I, you know, I spent a thousand bucks, and I forget that guy's name, O'Forrest Perdola, and uh, told me about this guy. And, you know, I told him what I was doing. He said, yeah, what you need is I, you, I have to use a 750 cubic inch uh, I mean, I'm 750 CFM uh, motor on this SSBS class. So uh, I bought that Quadrajet, and it's right. I'm gonna I'm gonna use it. But I was shopping the other day, and this guy had this 750, uh, brand new, uh, kind of what they call uh, new old stock. Um, he said it was a brass well, but um, brass well, brass well carburetors. You know, they, they, he, you know, nowadays it could be an older one, I don't know, but it is all brand new. And um, it, it was 300, well, he wanted 450 or something. I kind of told him I'd give him 375, and so he took it. So I bought it. Anyway, this is 750. It's supposed to be, uh, it's the competition series, doesn't have the air horn and all that. And, you know, it's not the newest of the new. The Brasswell carburetors now have individual bleed screws all along. Uh, the top of the uh, carburetor up here but anyway uh, I'll make another top for that sheet metal manifold for Holly 4150 series so all right this you know spending money all right look at this I got my uh, this is a 10 degree motor and uh, you know I've been building this manifold and I finally got you know everything working right uh, this is all still just in pieces um, this is going to be an interesting little story. I've always got a story to tell you. 
uh, all these little pieces have been cut by Sin Cut Sin. That's that outfit where, you know, I designed the thing, or you, you know, you or anybody designs their own pieces, and they cut flat stuff out with a laser. And so all these pieces actually are just sitting in here. Uh, it's kind of a mock-up. i got to weld the whole thing together, but I'm waiting on one more thing. I'm always waiting on something. But i get to, I got to get to first base before I can get to second base. But anyway, I'm making a, a phenolic uh, that will not allow the heat from the engine uh, to pass up to the carburetors. And so uh, this will all... Uh, this will all bolt together like that. Now, I can't hear your thoughts, but Hugh, what are you doing with eight holes on the top of a manifold, which appear to be dominators on a super stock car? Uh, well, I got to looking in the rule book. You know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of real um, hopeful that these these heads. I mean, they flow superior. You know, four. 40 almost or something and uh, I, I'm gonna probably try to I'm gonna I got all the pieces I, I got the brand new crank again I got you know all new rods this will be aluminum uh, rod motor I've already got the pistons they're brand new and they they're 410 degree you know um, I ordered a can the guy sent me a cam it's uh, you know it's there so I, I'm actually gonna try to build this thing to make a thousand horsepower I'm, I'm kind of hopeful um, uh, that it will uh, and you know uh, I was looking at competition eliminator you know that's cute weight per cubic inch uh, D S M A D uh, and I guess it's super modified automatic uh, I didn't build this car with a clutch pedal so you know 10 degree motor small block Chevy this will be uh, this will be a little bit bigger though it, it'll be like a 350 well very close to 358 it was 357 something um, and so, uh, but anyway, I kind of wanted to show you that. If you remember, I, uh, you know, drew up the program to CNC uh, the runners. I had those all CNC ported, and everything's all lined up right down the middle of the, the deal down there. So uh, into the ports, there shouldn't be many turbulence. Um, I've got, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, front uh, drive distributors for both motors now. And... Uh, so yeah, I, I built this with a, uh, you know, and I could always just make another top for a 4150 series and, you know, put that carburetor on it and see what happens. But, you know, I'm going to kind of lean into doing a, a two dominator deal, high winding, screaming little small block. Uh, we'll see what happens. This is all my own theory on everything. You know, everybody's got their own theory. So uh, 10 degree motor. And I guess, you know, uh, I built the headers while, you know, I was waiting on all this stuff. I put this 10 degree in there and built these headers for it so you know I got headers for it I have a complete motor I got a you know front belt drive and front distributor so let's let's try it hey you only live once Gordon taught me a lesson you know uh, everything gets left behind <laughs> that poor guy everything is it got all left behind to uh, all his stuff Mr. Deep Pockets never ending checkbook Gordon uh, all of the people this is the truth and I don't mind telling you this because it's kind of still unfolding um, you know, the dude just was born with a silver spoon and went out and everybody that helped him the most in all of his life, um, you know, the, all of his riches went back to his family. Nobody, he never even, no matter what he said the whole time, he was going to give everybody this and that and I'm going to leave you this and that. He didn't sign anything and you know bless his heart I, I that's kind of got to be the hardest thing in the planet to do but uh, that's what happened so he's he's gone and all his stuff is being divvied up between just a couple of people and a bunch of attorneys so by the time everybody you know settles it all out that's what will happen poor guy uh, but he lived a good life and everybody had fun I, I had a lot of fun helping him out Okay, SB2 headers, you know, those are done. The SB2 heads are all done. Um, I got my water pipe back in. Y'all really care about that, but that's that's all going. I got the toilet sitting out here, but I had to do the sheetrock repair in the restroom there, and I got all that, so if you ever need to use the restroom, just come on by. Okay, that's it. Oh, I made one other thing. It's This is a... I, I made one more thing. This is a... Uh, 
I didn't like the first one. Uh, it's it a little too loose, but it's my gauge panel uh, deal. Uh, two and a sixteenth inch uh, digital gauges. Uh, and I, I had to tighten it up because this, it didn't fit real tight. It was kind of loose here around the steering thing. And I got this little adjustable collar that I can slide this thing up and down. Once the dash and everything is in there, I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to slide it a little closer. I'm going to make a cover to kind of go around all the gauges, cover up the wires right behind here. And then I'll probably take this whole thing over to Rick McDonald and get this, uh, you know, this uh, water uh, hydro, hydro wood grain, hydro graphics wood grain thing. So, you know, that's about it. I can't think of anything else that I know of. Uh, but yeah, short blocks together. Heads are all ready. Uh, I'm waiting on, uh, well, I, uh, I got uh, the head gaskets came, uh, well, those came from Bobby Dromagle. And so I got head gaskets for the SB2. I got everything for the SB2 to, uh, you know, put my little, I'll put it all together, build my little engine setup starting uh, stand. You know, I'd make this thing right here for Gordon. Uh, this is all to store up a motor on an engine stand, uh, but I'm going to make a dedicated little stand, but that's me and my uh, CAD designing thing. Uh, Alamo Hot Rod Parts. We're big on Alamo Hot Rod Parts. A store, uh, you know, uh, nobody knows. Uh, it's it's still, still up in the air. Uh, I guess they'll offer it to somebody, probably try to buy it or I don't know. Last I heard, we're going to lock it up and go home because we're sick of dealing with it all. You know, I mean, everybody that's here now is just, you know, there. it's just the infantry. Uh, there's no, no captains, no colonels, no generals. It, it's just the infantry and they're just tired. Um, everybody's retired and, and tired. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. So, okay. What's well, it? I called my windshield guy two or three times. Of course, you know, we had that snow and all that, uh, and it's it's not, you know, once the windshield goes in there, uh, you know, this will start looking a little bit better, but no, I, I got the money for my tires. I'm going to get those next and set this on the ground, put the motor together, and uh, keep working on it. So, uh, y'all have a real good spring. I think we're through with the snow. Hopefully, all these dead plants will come back to life. Uh, they just weren't prepared for that. We just never get snow down here not like that. Or cold weather, anyway. Hey, y'all be careful. It's good to see from you. Or, uh, well, see me. It's good for you to see me. <laughs> I can't see you, but if I did see you, it's good to see you. Okay? Y'all be careful out there. Bye-bye.